Hello and welcome to Culture Over Coffee, a podcast focused on improving company culture and fostering employee engagement. Every week we chat with experts and thought leaders about the latest information and proven practices you can use to reduce regrettable turnover, increase productivity on your team, and retain key customers. So pour a cup of your favorite brew and join us. I'm your host, Beth Sunshine, SVP at Up Your Culture and the Center for Sales Strategy. In this episode, we're breaking down an individual company's culture journey. Where did they begin? What were the challenges they faced along the way? What results have they experienced on the other side? Joining me today to answer questions like those and more is the amazing Rich Barone, VP at Cox Media Arizona. Rich shares so many valuable thoughts like, when you make quick decisions to fulfill numbers in the short term, your organization suffers in the long term how any successful company culture initiative always starts at the top. And lastly, how even those who believe their organization to have a great company culture could stand to still take a look under the hood and do the work. Welcome, Rich, and uh, thank you so much for joining me today for a little culture over coffee. Yeah, an honor to be here, Beth. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Cox Media Arizona has been an active participant in the Up Your Culture program for the last year. So I've been really excited to talk to you. We've been able to to work together for quite a bit. And um, today we're going to do something we haven't done before on the Culture Over Coffee podcast. We're going to talk really specifically about your culture journey. Um, Talk about your experiences over the last year or in general and the strides you've made in increasing the engagement level of your people. So I'm, I'm excited to get into the nitty gritty of this. We're going to bear it all, Beth. <laughs> so we're going to, it's a, it's a, a bear all conversation. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Those are my favorite. All right. So you ready to get started? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do all it. right. So my first question that I'm, I yeah. want to ask you is you have always been a people first kind of manager. And that's actually, that that's language that you use and Cox Media uses as well. People first. Um, and I really associate you with that. I know you have a uh, a passion for having a strong company culture that's important to you. Thinking through all of your experiences in the business world, either recently or, or not, what would you say are, are some of the biggest pain points you've encountered related to company culture and employee engagement? Yes, people first is um, is something that that Cox has lived for the eleven years that I've been here, and and really it uh, it starts at the top. And I know that sounds cliche. Well, but true. I just I just saw our, our company results that are done outside of Up Your Culture just came out. And um, as a part of the presentation, there's a quote from Alex Taylor, who is a family of fifth generation uh, to Governor Cox. And his quote was, it's all, it, it, the people in this organization make it happen. It was basically, and I, I'm, don't quote me, but I'm, I'm summarizing what it said. So um, it's been, I don't want to say easy, but it's been easy at Cox because they from the top down, it starts with our people. And, mm-hmm. and that's really, um, really made it easy to lead lead people first. But to, uh, to your question, the, the, the things that were pain points when it comes to kind of company culture, I guess the, the, the things that I've suffered from have really been before Cox. And when it's a bottom line first organization, um, mm-hmm. you know, uh, for many years, I worked for a privately held companies, or excuse me, publicly held companies, where, you know, come uh, toward the end of first quarter, it was not about people. <laughs> it was about uh, profits and it was about uh, the people who owned our stocks, if you will. Um, to, to see that in verse has been just just wonderful. The decisions I've seen companies make when it is a pup, when it when there's uh, something besides the people that matter have um, um, are a lot different than companies that are that are privately held. So um, I, I've really seen that, and that was always uh, what always give me angst: the, the hustle, bustle, the hurry, the the let's get it all in in this time frame, as opposed to kind of the longer term approach. And, and when you think about your people, um, you know, our people are going to be here hopefully with us for years and years to come. So making decisions that that stretch out as opposed to short-term decisions is that was always a pain point for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think a lot, a lot of listeners can probably relate to what you're saying there. Yeah. 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 So biggest pain point would be when the numbers become more important than the, when you, when you make a rash decision or quick decisions 
uh, in order to to fulfill numbers in the short term, as opposed yeah. to kind of playing the the infinite game, I think, as, as Simon Sinek had put it in, in his book, but just thinking longer term as opposed to short term. Great. I love that. In the infinite game, because that's exactly what it is. Nicely sure. done. Yeah. yeah. All right. So when you reflect on the work that you've done with yeah. your culture program and the ways in which you've worked to strengthen your company culture, to improve engagement in your markets, what positive impacts have you been able to make on this journey? Well, it is a bear your soul type of exercise. You know, we, we do, um, we do the survey to start to baseline and, um, you know, every leader has a perception of how they lead and how the, the group sees, you know, the culture and, um, you know, our initial results were okay. I think is a fair way to say them, you know, they they weren't setting the world on fire, but they were, we thought we were in an okay place. Um, but there were certain things that stood out that really, um, I think impacted myself and also uh, our leadership team. So I think the, the, the positive impacts I've been able to make is, is getting buy-in from my team. And then that kind of cascades down almost like the, you know, it starts at the top with Alex, as I mentioned, and Cox's yeah. culture. Um, it really starts with the leader who, who is interacting every day with uh with the employee and if they if they are bought into it and it's not that kind of cascade effect then it it tends to fall flat so i I think the positive impact just this program has done and i don't want to take any credit for this the the program has done has really been just a kind of a cascade waterfall if you will of everybody saying the same thing so whether it be myself or any of our leaders um you know they'd say the same thing say the same thing. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the questions that would come up, Beth, were, well, why do we need to work on culture? You know, our culture is great. Great culture, right. It, great's a strong word. It, it, th- through discovering our culture was good, but um, through this, it, it yeah, it, it got a lot better. So um, that, I think that's one of my, my most positive uh, takeaways was everybody was pulling in the same direction. We all had one goal or you see our mantra in the background that we had a chance to really yeah. you know, fine tune. Everybody knows it. Everybody signed that paper. That's not a legal, legally binding document, I swear. <laughs> but we signed it, bought into it. And I think just um, everybody pulling in the same direction has been the most positive impact, I think, with Up Your Culture. It's a really interesting point that you make because what over time, what we've learned with Up Your Culture, when we're talking to prospective new clients, people wondering if we might be able to help them, what we've learned to do over the years is say up front that we're gonna give you all the tools, we're gonna bring you everything you need, but your people have to really wanna do it. You know, it it can't just be the person at the top and it can't be just the employees who are reporting up, it has to be everyone. And and all of the leaders there have to really own it and and have buy-in. And so we'll say that up front, like if your leaders don't wanna do this, it's not going to work. So I, I think it's interesting that you landed right on that. And you have a group of leaders who really rolled their sleeves up and yeah. wanted to do this. Yeah. Uh, putting great, great people around uh, around you and just in, in, in leadership roles has really, I think, opened our eyes to um, yeah, the positive impacts that. I agree. Uh, and I also have to say, I, I do remember from the very beginning when we were talking with you before this was rolled out, it was really important to you that you not... It, that it wasn't a mandate, that things weren't just shoved down people's throats. Absolutely. You wanted their buy-in from the beginning. And I really liked that, that that way of handling it, I think, paid well, off. Yep. And it wasn't, uh, I wouldn't say it was 100% on board, right? As soon as we opened the door, it was, um, I think, through the process and through the program, everybody eventually got got on board. But Yeah. Yeah. It's a one- one of them, it is a great group. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I also like the point you made. I don't want to dwell on it too long and use up all our time because I have other questions for you. But I like the point you made about just kind of speaking the same language. Um, you pointed to your mantra. We sometimes call that a reason for being your core values, the words, the language you use. It allows everybody to be pulling in the same direction. I am glad you shared that. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. So going from the positive to sure. the trickier, what hurdles have you run into along the way that were hard to overcome? And did you overcome them? And if so, how did you overcome them? Yes. No, it's perfect. Smooth through the, from start to finish. No, uh, no problems. Right, right. Like anything, the hard is kind of what, what makes it uh, great or turn out well for it. Um, I'll, I'll 
personally, the the I'd say a hurdle that I had to overcome was with the mantra or a mm -hmm. reason for being. We had the we've had the mantra established for about five years now, and through up your culture, we had a chance to kind of, I guess battle test the mantra, mm -hmm. and it's something that I have held very close to my heart and and tried very hard to cascade. And going through that process hurt because they were, you know, they, we were we were saying something that um, who I, I thought we were, we were picking it apart and we actually changed it. One of the pieces um, that I know it's hard to see, but the last piece we never had and it, the last piece on their strength in our communities. Yeah. And uh, we never had that on our mantra. We talk about um, uh, supporting each other and serving our clients. But then we added um, uh, strengthening our communities. And um, that was a piece that, you know, if I'm being completely honest, I was in the minority of, of, of uh, changing because I thought it was perfect the way it was. But through yeah. a lot of feedback, um, it was eye opening and, and it was a hurdle that, that I had to get over. But um, the team spoke very, um, yeah, they were very loud about it and very precise. <laughs> and I thought it made great sense. And, so, but that was uh, kind of exposing, you know, mm -hmm. I felt very exposed in, in a hurdle that I had to get over. Mm -hmm. And I think others too, um, I think that's hurdles that that others had too. They had a perception of what the culture was or what we were doing, that it was, you know, perfect. And then to kind of have the results come back that, you know, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't all in green. So, yeah. <laughs> it is color coded. So green, green uh, is good for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, I remember coming, going through that exercise with you and your team, and you mentioned Simon Sinek earlier, and, um, you know, he's also a, a great believer in the power of why, that people need that sense of purpose, that they need to show up every day really feeling like they know why they are there, there's meaning in them being there, and that we're all sort of on this shared mission together. And so it's interesting to hear, I mean, there were people who really wanted that community aspect in them in there. That was their why. Your why. And I loved the debate and the discussion. And you took uh, probably a week or so where you met on, on your own and then came back. I and mean, you had really, you guys had really thrown yourself into this project. And, and hopefully in the end, that debate, that conversation, that helped everybody really land on something that they now believed in. It, it absolutely did. And and it built a lot of trust inside our leadership team that that to hear um, everybody speak freely. I think that was one of the one of the an, another, I guess, um, another benefit of this project, too, was just the trust that everybody built mm -hmm. to be able to come out and say, no, this is not how I feel. Um, mm -hmm. I don't you know, this may be a statement, but I don't think we're living it. But, I mean, that, there's a lot of power in that. So. Mm, very, very cool. Okay, so for any organizations that are currently struggling with company culture and employee engagement, and, sure. and even there are plenty that are good that want to go to great, there are plenty where they are truly struggling right now for a variety of reasons. So it's it's a broad question, but if you had to come up with one piece of advice, and if you if you have more, that's fine too, but what's one piece of advice that you would give them? Look under the hood. I, um, I I would challenge anybody and everybody who says that they have a great culture to look under the hood. And mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is is it is um, almost like a, a break yourselves down to build yourselves up mentality. Um, again, I, I my advice would be even though you feel that you are you know maybe best in class in culture and how you do culture, take a chance to survey all your employees to really get an understanding of, of how your culture is. And um, I, that was eye opening for myself as well, too. I, I would have said our culture would have rivaled any organization, which I still firmly will now, of course, I firmly believe it. But um, but the things that came out of it helped us kind of kind of tweak our culture to get to to where we are today. So um, there's a quote. And Beth, I don't know if you said this, there's a quote to start up your culture. If you're not working on culture, you're, you know, your culture state, there's something around that, that you should always be working on culture. Yeah. Yeah. The, the concept is you're either progressing or regressing that no organization ever stays static. You, with every hire you make, with every decision you make, everything will either advance your culture or you'll regress. And so even companies with outstanding cultures, they have to keep their eye on the ball. They Two things need to happen really related to what you're saying. One is they need to always be 
um, ensuring that they are progressing. Um, but secondly, they need to show their people that. So as you were talking about surveying, you thought you had a good culture, you did have a good culture, and yet you still wanted to focus on that culture by putting that survey out there, by letting people chime in, you're just demonstrating to them that the reason they joined your organization, because you're a good place to work, is the, you know pointing to their future as well. It's not just in the past, but even moving forward, you're going to continue to, to tighten things up. That's a great yeah. point, Beth. Yeah, it, I truly feel that it made a difference in our, um, after a year's year's worth of work, I truly feel like that made it made a difference in in our final uh, our, our most recent survey. So. Good, good. Yeah. Okay, so last question for today: sure. mm -hmm. If you could wave a magic wand mm -hmm. and make one thing easier to to accomplish when it comes to company culture or employee engagement, what would that be? Magic wand question. <laughs> Um, Jeannie with three wishes. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, yeah. I, I think the thing that I'd, I'd want to make easier is, is how how we how we bring people back together. Mm. Um, and what I mean by that, we were a, a organization or culture, like I'm sure many, that were together every day of the week. Then, of course, we're not. And now, as we come back, there is a lot of power and um, a lot to be said about uh, about being remote in order to do our work productivity. There's no doubt about it. There's a lot to be said about that. There's also a lot to be said about bringing people back together. And, and, you know, there's, you know, there was a social aspect of, of work that yeah. uh, for better or worse, you know, really, um, really helped with engagement or I guess hurt engagement, depending how you look at it. And I think one of the things that, that, that I struggle with that, that I'd love a magic wand to help solve this is what is that magic formula? Is it yeah. you know, two days in the office is one day in the office? Is it never in the office? Uh, events quarterly that bring people back together socially. So that's a piece that that I, and I don't know if anybody has figured it out. I think you've seen a lot of announcements in the in the news lately. You know, bringing people back together four days a week or three days a week or or whatever. But um, I'd love to figure that out. That'd be my magic wand. Yeah, I, I think that'd be a really popular magic wand. I don't know. You'd have to really guard that because everyone wants it. Um, it is, it seems to be a real mystery. As a matter of fact, we have another episode of this podcast where we are focusing very, very specifically on that. I don't know that there is one There's no answer. You don't have an answer? I was, no. I was told you had an answer. Oh, well, here's the one answer I will tell you that we all have kind of come to, to agree on, even though there are the work from home, work remotely people and the work from the office people and the hybrid and the various forms of hybrid. The one thing that I think um, is sort of commonly agreed upon is if you are going to be hybrid, then the times you bring your people back into the office, whether it's three days a week, two days a week, whatever it is, there needs to be something going on in the office that couldn't be going on if they were working remotely. So bringing people back just to sit at their desk and make phone calls, that is you know, commonly seen as a no-no, bringing them back because you have a speaker or a training event or a team building event or a client coming in. If there's reasons for it, it seems to be more sure. positive. Now, how that plays out in your market, I'm going to be really interested yeah. to see. Yeah. But does that sound like what you're hearing on your end? Absolutely. It does. Spot on, Beth. Bringing people yeah. back together for a reason as opposed to the reason to just sit at their at their desk and, and make fun. It's, that's not reason enough. So yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah. Well, if anyone can figure it out, I know it's you. I'll be excited to see what the future I'll, brings. I'll tune into the podcast and, <laughs> and <laughs> see, yeah, use, some, see. use some things to take away. Yeah. 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 It's a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Rich, for the time you spent today talking about culture over coffee with me. You have, as always, shared a lot of good information and ideas and insights. I know our listeners are going to be able to really relate to you. Um, because of that, for those listening, I'd love to drop your LinkedIn information in the show notes so they can connect with you. Is that okay? Oh, I'd love that. Please feel free to reach out. Yeah. Perfect. Great. And I'm also going to add the link for, um, we have a, a free ebook on the four engagement elevators, which kind of made up that program that we took you through. I'll add that link as well so that our listeners can uh, learn more about specific ways in those four elevators that they can elevate engagement in their organizations. 
So thank you, Rich, and thank you to everyone who's listening. It is a journey to up your culture and elevate employee engagement. Enjoy that journey. Thanks for having me. Thanks so much for spending time with us on Culture Over Coffee. If you've enjoyed the conversation, be sure to subscribe and join us for every episode. For more helpful information on the topics of company culture and employee engagement, visit us at upyourculture.com.